Larry O'Connor of OWC talks Thunderbolt, M3 chips, and more. This is Mac Voices. Today's edition of Mac Voices is supported by the Mac Voices Dispatch, our weekly newsletter that keeps you up with everything Mac Voices is doing. From our published episodes to Chuck's other appearances to special events and more, subscribe at macvoices.com slash newsletter and stay fully informed so you don't miss a thing. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, as we record this, we're only a, well, probably about 18 hours, 12 hours uh, away from Apple's announcement of the M3 chip and the M3 new M3 Max. And so I couldn't wait to talk it over with Larry O'Connor of OWC, Other World Computing. Larry, it's great to see you. Thanks for being here. Yeah, likewise, Chuck. Thanks, thanks for having me on. This is always a lot of fun. Well, this is a lot of fun. As usually we see each other at CES or NAB, and then somehow life gets in the way and we never connect. So I was really excited to talk to you. And when we set this up, ironically, we didn't even know about the Apple event, let alone the fact that we were going to talk uh, M3. So I'm just going to jump right in there. You build things for Apple devices, Apple Apple hardware. What are your reactions to what we saw? You know, uh, just uh, before they could, they called out that event that was talking about you know these new systems when you know when they're going to release product and I considered it you know, as we got close to that kind of a long shot at uh, the week ago that there would be new MacBook Pro but a possibility given that it seemed like supply chain is what kind of put the uh, the, the M3 uh, I'm sorry the M2 last year a little bit behind schedule coming out in the pros so the seed I, I, I still have to say the C and M3 uh, lineup last night and the the laptops, well, more specifically the pro laptops, was still kind of a surprise. iMac was, you know, a no-brainer. You know, thought they might update the Airs, although that seemed questionable with the uh, the M2 15-inch being you know, so new and so fresh. But that they that they brought out the Pro and the Max for the, uh, and of course the M3 base and the, the 14 and 16-inch was, it was surprising. And the 13-inch, you know, granted that's the last the last of the touch bars is gone, along with the touch bar. But the uh, the 14 inch taking the place uh, at the bottom with an, a, a true base configuration, eight gigs of memory, M3 processor. You know, no, uh, that's something to call out. You know, no support for more than one display. Although our dual HDMI 4K adapter takes care of that, just like it does for all the M1 and M2 base machines. So I say you get more displays there, but it was kind of. I, I will say this. I thought it was a little bit when I saw the the number for that fifteen ninety nine start price. It's like, huh? And then uh, kind of looked again. And said, oh, okay. I, I see here. It's 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 eight gigs of memory. It's it's not thunder. It, it's not the full. Uh, we can go into Thunderbolt, and I'll I'll stop in a second. But we really should talk about Thunderbolt because this is also the first time since the uh, the first M one silicon machine was released. It didn't have dual uh, no, display support which is a Thunderbolt 4 marketing requirement. This is the first time Apple called out Thunderbolt 3 as a uh, as the Thunderbolt version or revision, like how you want to call it, on their M3 while still maintaining Thunderbolt 4 for the, the Pro and higher. It's always been Thunderbolt slash USB 4 and the M1 and the M2, and then you get to the, the Pro and the Max and the Ultra processors, and those models, uh, I should say, the, the models equipped with the, the Pro Max and Ultra always say Thunderbolt 4 slash USB. For, which is, it's interesting now they're, they're actually naming Thunderbolt 3. The reality is, as we've talked about over and over, there's no functional difference on a Mac between Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4 when it comes to using Thunderbolt devices, just as Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4 are really the same technology. But this is the first time Apple, I guess you could say, at least put out the kind of comply with, you know, or, or is using Intel's marketing uh, for differentiation. Thunderbolt 4 requires at least two displays be supported from a single uh, Thunderbolt port. Apple's M series and their base M processors don't natively support more than one display. And that's the only qualification that would prevent, say, an M3 from being a Thunderbolt 4 machine versus a Thunderbolt 3 machine. But still kind of a, an interesting smooth play they did last night, eliminating the 1299 base MacBook Pro and stepping it up to uh, 
a more affordable 14 inch size. Yeah. And I mean, it, I noticed that too, because I've been recently um, a little obsessed with adding displays to my system that's behind me. And so trying to find out how many I can add, how I go about adding them. And so, yeah, I've, I kind of picked up on that as well, paying a little bit of attention to it. Um, so I, I want to make sure that, that what you just said is clear. So obviously mm -hmm. Apple, Apple just supports a display through the HDMI port on these machines. Um, but if you want to connect an, two displays to one Thunderbolt port, it can do that. Is that correct? The uh, the, the the base M3 by spec, and we'll have to test this, is showing support only for a single external display, which is interesting since it has the HDMI port. And the HDMI port on these machines technically takes the place of a Thunderbolt port, just like we can do on like our uh, our GoDock. Instead of having three downstream ports, we've got two downstream ports plus an HDMI, since it uses the uh, the, the USB uh, DP. So we're, we're still it's it's you know we'll we're, we'll check that out. But the bottom line is with our dual HDMI adapter, if you plug in a uh, if you plug our dual HDMI adapter in, you do have support for three displays on that machine through a single Thunderbolt port. Without it. You know, Apple's basically stating that you know, there's support for one display until you go to the Pro or the Max model where you now have up to four displays natively supported on those machines. Okay, so with that... And I should also add these are 4K displays as opposed to uh, to uh, 1080 or a yeah. standard HD. So with that adapter, I can get two 4K displays out of one Thunderbolt port. Correct? Statement? Correct. Okay. Yep, correct statement. And do I still and the one have... thing I also I don't want to really confuse also on Thunderbolt three, all of Apple's prior Intel machines with Thunderbolt three also supported uh, at least two four K displays uh, via the ports. Okay, so I still have my internal screen on the or built in mm -hmm. screen. I yes. Um, so, so that that means I have three. So can I can I add a fourth through nope. another Thunderbolt port? Well. You could with another adapter, but you, you could, like the dual HDMI, which provides a display link uh, capability, you could technically with a second uh, adapter that does the display link versus the uh, the native, uh, how to say, uh, video out. Okay. It is possible. I just leave it like this. It, it, it's absolutely possible. So how about the raw power of these chips? Um, Apple made a great deal, <laughs> made a big deal out of kind of trouncing the Intel chips uh, and also saying how much more powerful they were than the M1s and even the M2s. Uh, how do you view that, especially in light of some of the high-end hardware that you make? You know, it just enables creative people to be more creative. I mean, things become more fluid, more seamless, faster. These are that's, you know, the GPU, we're going to be really interested in taking a look at how that new GPU technology improves that efficiency and capability. On the processor side, you know, it's obviously a big difference between M1 and, and M3. It was a much smaller difference that they showed on the, the processor capability between the M2 and the M3. And they didn't give a whole lot of, uh, I guess, say quantitative uh, uh, information in terms of what the GPU performance difference was. You know, between the machines. They talked about how much faster it is, but didn't necessarily, they show some examples, but again, what they're comparing to, uh, or where the comparisons were, you know, those details, uh, you know, I certainly haven't delved into yet. So it's, I will make this comment. I mean, the performance per watt continues to become incredible. It's, an, and again, it was kind of a smooth transition when they talk about the 14-inch Pro, because now you have the, uh, the 14-inch Pro, you know, with the base M3, as opposed to, you know, the M2 and the M1, of course, were always pro versions of those processors. And what we don't have are good comparatives between what the M3 does versus an M2 Pro or even an M1 Pro. And that's kind of the, the crossover. And the, the pros and the, the ones they may, I, can, I think is safe to make is an M1, I'm sorry, an M2 Max isn't going to beat a, an, I'm sorry, an M3 Max rather isn't going to beat a M2 Ultra. And my expectation is so that in, if you have an M1 Max system, you're probably better off with an M1 Max than you are with an M3 and maybe even an M3 Pro. But we have to do all the, uh, we we'll have to get out there and do the, do the testing, so to speak. At the end, of the, the last thing I just put out there for, and this is, I think, Apple's biggest you know, challenge. The, Apple's biggest competition to some degree is, is now themselves. When you look at just how fast 
even in M1 is how many people out there that have M1s you know, are fully utilizing just the capability that's in that M1? You know, is the M3 faster? Yeah. Certainly. But the M1, I mean, the original M1 and M2 still trounce pretty, pretty effectively most of the Intels in the market. I mean, Apple last night was comparing themselves to a 12-core Intel, you know, by no means, you know, a base model that you know, they said that, that everybody out there would typically be having. So it's, again, it's it's pretty wild how fast and how impressive you know, all Apple Silicon is. And these machines that do believe are built to last. I mean, they they run cool. They're low power. Low power definitely is, po- is positive with lifespan. So it, it's really going to be interesting to see what users decide. Yeah, I can really take advantage of this. Or, hey, my, my current machine is not even breaking a sweat. You know, why do I need to, uh, to buy a new one? Which kind of leads me to something else I wanted to ask you. Are we surprised that we saw the M3 this fast when we didn't see, uh, I will call it, a wider spread deployment of the M2? Yeah, well, it made sense. I mean, if you take a look at just the, the costs for a certification, everything else has to go through to bring out each new generation of systems. It made total sense for it to be in the iMac. And the iMac is a desktop machine. You know, I don't believe from a desktop point of view that M3 necessarily in, in an iMac creates any uh, competitive confusion with their other models. I was really surprised that they brought out the, uh, you know, the, the M2, this, or the M3 rather, in the Pro and the Max so soon after those laptops came out in the fall, and I'm sorry, in the fall, in late winter, in February, as well as uh, you know, how close it is to WWDC when we just got M2 Ultra and M2 Max and the, uh, the studios and the, the, the brand new Mac Pro. So it's real interesting. And again, the difference on the higher end, I think, is going to be smaller than it is on the low end. I mean, at the the base, I mean, as you scale up, you know, there's a lot of other things going on. And it's the GPU, though, that that technology, we need to see how that plays across the entire span of these processors. But ultimately, uh, it's, it's, like I said, Apple's own competition, their biggest competition is themselves and making sure that the narrative is clear as to, I mean, if you just bought a studio with a Max in it, and now you're looking at it saying, well, I can get the same amount of memory with an M3 Max and a laptop to go, you know, not as many ports, there's other differences. You know, there's, it, it gets, it, it's, it gets interesting to say the least, but you know, I would not fret and I wouldn't be upset and I wouldn't, if I bought a, I may not be the happiest camper in the world if I just bought an M2 uh, laptop, you know, call it six weeks ago. But the power, again, the, the performance is there is absolutely incredible. And I do believe the gap, uh, uh, I guess you say, that the benefit of an M3 Pro and Max over the M2 Pro and Max is relatively limited versus the, uh, is more limited, is a smaller delta versus what the uh, the M1 and the, to the M3 or the M1. And even the M2 to the M3, I think they say is about a 10% uh, difference. And like you said, there are always going to be those people who are distressed that they don't have the the most current, latest, and greatest. But at the end of the day, it's about the usage. And so, depending on what you're doing, you may not you may not need these or need the, not need these for a little while, um, unless you're doing some of the higher end calculations that we saw demonstrated in the uh, in some of the video of the event. I couldn't agree more. And you know, perhaps you know, listing out Thunderbolt three. You know, one of Intel's biggest mistakes with Thunderbolt four was was calling it Thunderbolt 4, it created a lot of confusion. This whole Gen Mine is one thing, and you've got people who believe, you know, like, I got to have the latest and greatest. If it says Thunderbolt 3, it's not the latest, which isn't true because Thunderbolt 4 is more a host definition than a peripheral definition, a peripheral side. You know, it's really for docks and hubs where you're getting more Thunderbolt ports, for peripherals providing direct performance and direct capabilities, data storage, video processing, capture, eGPU, whatever else. Thunderbolt 3 is actually the, the better chipset. But you have folks that will request a Thunderbolt 4 product without understanding, a peripheral without understanding, you know, that Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4 are really interoperable. And it's that whole Gen minus 1 thing. So Apple calling Thunderbolt 3 on the, the base machine and then Thunderbolt 4 on these other machines, you know, might just be uh, somebody in marketing going, you know, if they see Thunderbolt 3 instead of Thunderbolt, you know, maybe they, they, that might be another nudge to, uh, to mo- move, up a, move up to that, that pro processor. And then the other other thing I put out there 
you know, the other thing that makes actually conversationally right now that made a lot of sense for Apple to have an M3 come out when they uh, right now, certainly it didn't make sense to do an update for the iMac to M2 on, on 20 different levels, but it also was a great opportunity for them to come out and put that bigger number out there, that 40% improvement in performance. Things what they said over, uh, over the M1, you know, versus it would have been a smaller doubt that they'd had M2 first and then went M3 later. But again, these machines, I mean, they, they absolutely trounce the Intel competition today. And that's, you know, something that, you know, Apple's competition is Apple. And these machines are, you know, they're, they're just more amazing. <laughs> that's, that's, that's all. That's, that's really uh, the bottom line. I'm looking forward to the benchmarks, especially comparing, say, the, M, the M1 um, Pro Max and Ultra, you know, to the M2 Pro Max Ultra, to the M3 Pro Max Ultra. Because um, I'm right now, my current machine is a is a MacBook Pro M1 Max, and I'm anxious to see how that how that fares in the packing order. I mean, there's no question it's going to be down um, compared now to what the what the higher end is, but how sure. much down it would be at the end of the day. So. Yeah, you're probably a pretty. I, I would expect you still to be the M3. I mean, you have the you're loaded with GPUs with that Max. Plus the the higher core count, plus I mean just the, the yeah I think what more can I say the higher core count and the higher uh, I'd say SOC just the transistors in the Max is is still higher than the uh, I believe the original M, M I'm sorry the current M3 so we shall see and I'm imagining that machine still does everything it needed to do without uh, breaking the sweat yeah it pretty much does I mean there's some upscaling that is always going to benefit from more horsepower. But at the end of the sure. day, how much how much upscaling do I really do, and how many times am I doing eight K streams or even multiple four K streams? So it it just it, <laughs> but, but there's always that gear lust, Larry. You know, we can't, we all have it. We can't help it. <laughs> no, hey, no, no doubt, no, no question whatsoever. It's just I mean, it's it's Apple has set new standards in terms of what you can do on a laptop, on a desktop, on, on a consumer, but truly are a, a consumer professional machine as opposed to the real expensive, uh, let me say, high-powered you know, server-based you know, systems. They're, I mean, again, everything everything Apple Silicon is pretty darn amazing. But it's a what's going to be interesting, I think, for a lot of people out there, that 15-inch MacBook Air is an amazing, the convenient and fast uh, piece of equipment doesn't have the horsepower for some of the uh, some of these you know the workflows you're talking about, but it's 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 pretty incredible. Now they we've got this pro. I don't and you know, I don't want to you know, to say step on anybody at Apple necessarily. This is just my opinion, but you know, it, I think it's a really hard choice. Actually, I don't think it's a hard choice at all personally between a, a MacBook Pro Air. And a, I'm sorry, a MacBook Air, rather, 15-inch and a 14-inch a Pro with a base M3. Last question, and then we'll move on. But I, I'm, I'm really curious to, to hear your reaction to this. Were you surprised that the, the M3s are making their debut in a, a, a high-end, high, high well, scratch that, in any of the portables, that we aren't seeing those in the quote-unquote Pro machines? Um because the Mac Studio, I mean, there have been a lot of debate about what the what the Mac Studio is, but it does seem to come down price wise anyway, more toward the Pro end, and then we also have the the Mac Pro as well. So, were you surprised to see them make a debut in the in the MacBook Pros? Honestly, that was the one thing, and I'm still. I mean, Apple really didn't go into it. But the short answer is yes, just from just from a positioning point of view. When you've got the studio with the Max, and then of course you can go up to the Ultra in the studio, you know, versus now a laptop that you can get the same amount of memory and the same, and an M3 with you know, the, if you're comparing Max to Max, now you get an M3 Max and a laptop that should be, you know, substantially faster than the studio. So with the Max processor, now the Ultra is a different story. But it was it's, it's interesting timing, and it certainly has to create a little bit of challenge for Apple in terms of how they're positioning and and how they're uh, you know, talking about their desktops versus their laptops. So it's I can only imagine you know just you know what the debate was internally. You know, so if you do the to me if you did the pros, you almost have to do the uh, almost have to do the studio. Now if they'd done the M3, that would have been or the sorry, the Mac Mini, you know that would have added you know further uh, a little bit of further 
confusion to the to the whole point. Unless they had an M3 as a base and made it the M2, uh, made the Pro and M2. But even that, again, I, I have to leave that to Apple. I was, it's it's a really fast turnaround. Unless again, you know, supply chain was truly the reason that they didn't bring it. Though maybe the M2s were originally planned for last fall instead of you know February, and perhaps I mean this is just putting Apple back on the, their original plan. You know, there's plenty of reasons to do it. The laptop market is a lot much larger market for them. There's other features in the the desktops, you know, namely the, the Mac Studio that you you just don't get in the laptop in terms of the ports and the SSD and the the the, the, the internal you know, capabilities. The, the some of the extra, uh, I guess you say, feature add-ons that only the Studio have, and of course the Ultra processor, which you know, I do expect the Ultra uh, to, to still run circles around an M3 Max. It's still uh, it was kind of a surprise. But a positive surprise. Now, the other thing I will drop out there, because we're talking a little bit about Thunderbolt, it's really interesting, you know, to me what this potentially, uh, you know, bodes for, you know, when you know, Apple uh, you know, ends up adopting uh, the next Thunderbolt generation. Thunderbolt Five is you know, coming around the corner. It's, I mean, we're, we're gonna, we'll see PC laptops early next year, which, how do I say, uh, is what it is. Come the beginning of I've got to learn to turn my silence my phone. <laughs> Somebody wants you. We've got uh, we've got. Uh, how do I say? You know, the, of course, PCs. That, you know, we're expecting to see. I mean, and tells made announcements for when PCs with Thunderbolt Five will be uh, coming around the corner here, and it's going to be interesting now to see just when you know what generation of silicon Apple puts uh, Thunderbolt Five into. Maybe that'll be an, an Ultra model in the future. Maybe maybe it won't be till M4, but uh, hopefully it, it does happen. And we're certainly, uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, when that comes about. And again, I turn around and say, just like an M3, you know, there's a, even though everybody wants the latest and the greatest and the next generation, you know, Thunderbolt 4 and Thunderbolt 3, you know, the 240, the, I should say the two, the Thunderbolt 3 and 4, which are the 40 gigabit external interface today, provide an incredible amount of performance you know, over copper. And it's, it becomes, a, just like these machines, there's a, a a relatively small base that truly, uh, you know, how I say, will benefit from what Thunderbolt 5 brings. And then the other uh, aspect I bring on Thunderbolt 5, and this kind of happened with Thunderbolt 1 and 2. Actually, happened with Thunderbolt 1. I remember when Thunderbolt, the first Thunderbolt came out, everybody wanted to get Thunderbolt. Instead of buying a Firewire drive, everybody wanted Thunderbolt drives. And we were in the position of kind of saying, why? Why do you want a Thunderbolt drive? The, the, the bandwidth limitation at that point in time wasn't the interface. Firewire was fast. Firewire 800 was faster than way back then. And this changed quickly, but way back then was faster than, you know, the drive, an external drive you could put into a Thunderbolt enclosure. So the we understood the duels, understood the arrays, but the, there was little to zero benefit to spend that extra cost to get a uh, go Thunderbolt uh, versus uh, Firewire for a single drive. And the same is kind of similar true with Thunderbolt 5. I mean, there's you know, the hard drives have not, are, today there's still limitations, there's still bottlenecks that aren't Thunderbolt, they're in the hardware, there's, we're pushing things already to the maximum that different drives, different solutions can provide. So, you know, other than high-end SSD arrays and, and the like, you know, we're, and we're also talking sustained data arrays too. If you're in video production, a burst rate doesn't mean anything to you. It's, it's that sustained data rate you need to be able to get the job done across and really take advantage of, of what this new technology is going to bring. So I don't think we need to be in a, a giant rush for it. We're not in a huge rush for it. We want to see it done right and bring it out right. But I'm still very, uh, it's, it's, this is a very way too long way, which, you know, and I'm going to say this live if it is live, but perhaps this will be edited down and this will, you'll, you'll, you'll narrow this. You bring this into its, its finer points, but it, it is interesting what this potentially uh, you know, means for when we're going to see uh, uh, any kind of next generation uh, Thunderbolt or USB forty V two, you know, on the uh, on the Max. From what standpoint? You mean that it won't be necessary or won't be supported? Well, the M threes. I mean, and Apple can do all sorts of miracles. I mean, you know, magic things. They control the silicon. We don't know. You know, there's no way for us to know what's on, uh, of course, on Apple's silicon. But it kind of goes almost without saying that if we have if with the M threes released today. Now, the interface for Thunderbolt for USB, I mean, those are pretty well locked as opposed to something that would be an update to uh, to enable Thunderbolt 5 or USB V2, uh, 40 V2 uh, 
uh, how do I say, performance. You know, Thermo 5 will bring us to 80 and 120 gigabits as opposed to today's you know, 40 gigabits over uh, you know, USB 4 and, and Thunderbolt 3 and 4. So that, that we have the silicon today with Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4, you know, as opposed to you know, this being a, a WWDC release next year, or such, I, I mainly say I don't. To me, this this would imply that we're not going to see Thunderbolt five or or the use or eighty gigabit eighty gigabit uh, USB four until uh, you know, potentially the M four series. I don't know that for a fact, and I have no insider information one way or the other. If I didn't, I wouldn't be talking about it. But uh, it 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 would seem that uh, Thunderbolt the, the the current forty gigabit interfaces are, are what we're going to see standard throughout the uh, the M three life. And you know, Apple may have a Apple has Apple pulls out all sorts of you know I say rabbits out of their hat and aces in the hole. But that would be my the big thing right now would be we're, we're forty gigabit uh, for the X for fastest external interface you know, potentially up until the, the M4 comes out. Larry is back next time on Mac Voices to help us finish up our understanding of Thunderbolt, especially in relation to the new M3 Max. Then he turns his attention to the power of iPhone 15. That's next time on Mac Voices. I'm Chuck Joyner, and I will see you then. As always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, Consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices each month. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.